Hello second graders, it's Mrs. Gagney here. What do you think I want to talk to you about? You're right, Creative Expressions Day. Since it can't be at school this year, we have a new plan and we teachers will be sending an email to your parents to explain how it's going to go. But I'll give you a little preview. We're going to ask you to have someone video you saying your poem and send it to us on May 7th. If you get it done a day or two early, that's fine too, you can send it. But we want you to take your time and practice really well. Have it memorized as much as you possibly can. And then we'd really like you to make it a special day, like maybe even get your uniform on or you can dress up in like special clothes that you have and do your poem for maybe your whole family could sit down and listen to you and someone can video you. All right, but in the two weeks, these two weeks that we have until May 7th, we're going to talk about how to do a good job on our poem. So we've already started a little bit by talking about practicing a lot. How many of you have practiced in front of the mirror? Have any of you practiced for your family or a pet? Did anybody line up your stuffed animals and practice for them? I think they would love it. I think you should. <laughs> um, have you practiced relaxing your hands, standing up nice and straight and tall, relax your hands at your side. You can gesture, and by gesture that means um, pointing at something or shrugging your shoulders, something that seems very natural to the words in your poem. Most of the time, you should just plan to have your hands resting um, at your sides. And let's see, what else did we talk about? We talked about adding expression, volume, tone, speed. Sometimes we need to speed up a little bit. Certain words make it seem like you should speed up. If you're talking about a bunny hopping quickly, you don't want to say the bunny hopped quickly. That wouldn't make sense, would it? Um, we've also talked about eye contact, making sure that you're looking at your audience, not down at the floor or up at the ceiling, right? They want you to look at them. And now I would like to mention something called enunciation. And in this form, this is the verb form, when you enunciate, Enunciate means to say the words clearly. So I drew probably the best mouth I've ever drawn. I would really like everyone to clap for my mouth that I drew today. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I'm being silly, but it really is probably the best mouth I've ever drawn. When you enunciate, we can understand your words. So listen to me say enunciate two different times. Enunciate. Enunciate. Which sounded clearer? The first one or the second one? I hope you said the second one. I was trying to enunciate more clearly the second time. When you are listening to someone talk, if they are not enunciating, it is very frustrating because you can't understand their words. So, we need to work on that if we're going to do a good job on our creative expression poem. Today, we have a little assignment, but first I want to read two poems to you. The first poem I read to you, I'm, going, I'm not going to show it to you because I'm going to say it in a way that's not enunciating and see if you can understand my words. Maytime magic. A little seed for me to sow, a little earth to make it grow, a little hole, a little pat, 
a little wish, and that is that. A little sun, a little shower, a little while, and then a flower. Could you understand the words? Let's look at it and read it and see how closely you guessed my words. Maytime magic. A little seed for me to sow. A little earth to make it grow. A little hole, a little pat, a little wish, and that is that. A little sun, a little shower, a little while, and then a flower. So, could you understand my words the first time, or were you a little surprised at some of them when we read it through the second time? I did not enunciate very well the first time, did I? I've got another fun little poem for you, and we'll just look at it right away. Goodbye, my winter suit. Goodbye, my winter suit. Goodbye, my hat and boot. Goodbye, my ear-protecting muffs and storms that hail and hoot. Farewell to snow and sleet. Farewell to cream of wheat. Farewell to ice-removing salt and slush around my feet. Right on to daffodils. Right on to whippoorwills. Right on to chirp-producing eggs and baby birds and quills. The day is on the wing. The kite is on the string. The sun is where the sun should be. It's spring, all right. It's spring. Yay! And there's a drawing of spring. We are so glad to say goodbye to our snow pants and all the boots and hats and all those things that go along with it, aren't we? It's finally spring. Well, today you are going to do a paper that looks like this. I'll take a picture of it. And you can use whatever tool on Seesaw works best for you to answer the questions. Let's read the poem together. It's called, What's My Treat? I'll go slowly so you can keep up with me. Ready? I picked it up, cold and wet. It's going to taste good, I'll bet. My mom slices into the pink fruit. My small piece looks juicy and cute. I see the seeds so little and black. I want to taste this healthy snack. I take one bite, so sugary sweet, so cool, so refreshing in the hot summer heat. Can you guess my tasty treat? I'll share with you if you keep it neat. All right, now you're going to answer these three questions. How many rhyming sets can you find in this poem? Let's find one. What rhymes with wet? Did you say bet? I hope so. So that's one set, all right? And then you're going to look for more sets of rhyming words and write how many sets you found. A set means two of something. Actually, a set could have more than two. So you look for how many sets of rhyming words you find in the poem. And then number two, what is the character's treat? Did you already figure it out? Maybe you have to read it again to figure out what it is. I think you'll all know. And number three, what words or phrases helped you figure this out? What words or phrases helped you figure out what the treat was? All right. So you finish those three questions, write the answers, and send them to your teacher. Practice your poem. Don't forget to relax your hands, to add expression, to use eye contact. So if you're practicing for your stuffed animals, look at them. <laughs> and then don't forget to enunciate. Everybody say the word enunciate. One more time. Enunciate. All right. And once again, isn't that a great mouth? <laughs> Have a good day, everyone.